Hi guys, and welcome along then to this Ableton Live 9 uh, beginner course. This is the level one course that we're doing today. Um, we're gonna be splitting things up into a couple different levels because I wanted to uh, make the tune a bit more interesting and the, the final product a bit more interesting as well. And it kind of involved doing a bit more work to it. So I'm um, doing a similar course to the Ableton Live 8 course, uh, the beginner one that is, but we're going to, uh, again, have another level after that to add a couple bits um, of uh, more complex elements to it, but still very simple and uh, easy to understand. That's the, the important part. Um, so I'm going to begin by opening up uh, Ableton Live 9. Um, I've got Ableton Live 9 intro here, but uh, you, can, you can use whatever Ableton Live you've got, um, whether it's just the standard or the suite. Um, everything I'm teaching here, you should be able to do in Live 9 intro and in the standard and, and sweet editions. So I'm just gonna open this up. Okay, so uh, just before we get started with everything, before we start making any sounds at all, we're going to make sure that our audio cards are set up and working correctly. So to do this, you need to go into the preferences folder for live. Um, so we go up to live and preferences on a Mac uh, on a PC, it'll be under Options and Preferences, I think. Or as a as a quick tip, you can do Command and Comma on a PC on a on a Mac, or Control and Comma on a PC. We'll uh, open that menu up for us. So we're in the Audio tab automatically, which is where we want to be. And from this menu, um, first of all, make sure you've got your um, if you're using a external um, interface such as a, uh, I've got a, an Apollo set up here at the minute. Um, if you've got um, whatever ex external interface you've got, I don't know, there's there's <laughs> hundreds of them. Um, make sure it's plugged in, make sure you've got your drivers installed. Um, plug it in and get it uh, hooked up to your speakers. Make sure your speakers are off when you do that. Um, get your line outs plugged into your speakers and then you can go from here. So driver type. Um, on a Mac, it's going to be core audio. On a, a PC, you're probably going to be going for the ASIO driver. Um, if there is no ASIO driver there, um, or if you're just using um, your built-in uh, sound card, that, that's fine on a, on a laptop um, or on a on your uh, desktop. You can just use your, your built-in sound card. Um, some of them on a, on a PC, I know, don't have ASIO drivers. Um, to get a, a lower latency and a better sort of quality, you're going to want to get ASIO drivers. There's... Uh, a website online I know does uh, it's called ASIO for all uh, that's ASIO and then the number four and all and uh, they support a lot of the the built-in um, sign cards that uh, it'll give a, a nice ASIO driver to use but from here we're just going to go for core audio because we're we're on a Mac as I say um, and this will open up a, a whole host of options for us so the first thing then is our input device. If you're going to be recording anything in, so if you're recording some um, microphones in, um, or uh, if you've got a drum kit set up, I don't know, and you're going to be recording that, you're going to want to enable your audio input devices. Otherwise, nothing is going to be selectable from within live. So if we just click in here, um, we've got, um, I'm on a Mac laptop, so we've got our, our built-in microphone. Um, we've got a built-in line in as well, and then I've got a couple extra bits and bobs there, but um, I've also got my external card here, which is the Apollo. So if I, um, for example, if I clicked on my Apollo, and then we wanted to uh, pull in my, my mic line, which is coming in through channel one, go to input, and I would enable mono one and two, um, or stereo, um, that basically if, you, if you've got your, your mic coming in, it's gonna be usually on a mono track, so you're gonna wanna pull it in on a mono track, so you're gonna wanna bring in one and two as two separate channels, uh, three and four as, as two separate channels. If you bring in the stereo, you're going to um, mix one and two together. Um, so as I say, if you're, if you're recording microphones, bring them in as mono tracks, um, we're not, currently using this so I'm just going to cancel that 
and I'm going to go for no device because we're we're not recording anything. I've got my recording already set up. Um, but if you're if you're using your sort of built-in microphone or your line in, again, you get smaller options. Um, you can bring in if you want. You can bring in your your stereo as well as your mono one and two. You can always select them from within live. But we're we'll cover all this in a in a different video where where we'll we will be recording in stuff. So for now, I'm just going to go for no device. Our audio output device then is where we're sending our audio to. Um, again, if you're on a, a built-in input, um, such as a laptop or a desktop with a no external sound card, this is what you're going to select. If you've got an external uh, sound card set up, um, such as my Apollo, we would then select that, and that would switch to the that uh, output. Now, if we go to the output configuration, again, we get a whole host of outputs to select, and you'll notice on the back of your sound card, um, or uh, on the side of your laptop or whatever, if, you, if you're on a laptop, you're only going to get um, your stereo one and two, and you're going to get the option of a mono one and two. Um, keep them both highlighted, and, and again, it gives you the option to select them or not to select them. Um, so uh, basically, just highlight your one and two stereo, and that'll pretty much um, guarantee that you're going to get some audio out as long as you've got your, your leads going from your one and two stereo outs, or from for example, your headphone jack on your laptop will be your one and two stereo. Um, again, I'm going to bring this back because I'm currently using this. So built-in output on a laptop. I've got my one and two stereo, which is my headphone jack. And that's fine. Um, the next menu below, um, keep your sample rate at 44. Uh, that's fine. Um, that's just basically CD quality. Um, the sample rate conversion is basically a, a, it's another sort of CPU usage. You can have it at normal or high um, samples that aren't at 44. It'll convert them. Um, you can either do that in high quality or in normal quality. Um, the latency then, um, this is uh, going to cause you a bit of, if you're recording in audio, um, it's basically the... Uh, it's it's how big the chunks are that your um your processor um processes the the data coming through. So if the, the higher the chunk, the the um the bigger sort of sample that it, the the computer takes um and then processes. Um, the lower this is, then it obviously has to do it a lot faster, um because there's smaller chunks, which makes the CPU spike up. So basically. Up here, you've got a CPU usage. If this starts going haywire and and you're getting glitches and pops and bangs, um, you're gonna want to increase the the number of samples that your your buffer has. Um, this will affect the output latency. Now, we'll just we'll talk about that. Um, the lower you put this, then the the quicker and more instantaneous your computer is gonna react. If you hit play on a sample, it's gonna go bang. And it's going to play the lower this this is because it's it's only buffering forty five samples at a time, which means it uh, it happens a lot quicker. If you do it at two thousand forty eight, it's it has to process all two thousand forty eight first, and then play the sound for you. Um, so again, if we say I set this to two thousand forty eight, you'll notice that the output latency will go up, which it does. It goes to forty seven point four milliseconds. And this is basically uh, the length of time um, that it takes for your computer to uh, convert this to a uh, analog signal to be played out of your computer. And um, if we bring this down to 14 samples, this should uh, snap the output latency right back down. And it does. It brings it down to 1.25 milliseconds, which is a lot quicker. And um, these are noticeable differences. So I'm just going to set it in around the middle because 14 milliseconds, I don't think um, my computer is going to handle that very well. So we'll just set that to apply. The rest of this you can kind of just ignore for now. And that is it. That should be us being able to play audio because we've got our driver set up. Um, we have currently don't have an input because we're not using that. But we have an output set up and I know my headphones are plugged into these stereo whites. Um, 5.30 samples everything's fine so we can just close that window 
And I can just do a quick test here if I go to the samples folder. There we go. I can hear that okay. And that's us all set up. And the next video, what I'll do is I'll go through the user interface of Live9. And we'll just talk about some of the uh, core features that you're going to need to know to do the rest of this course. Okay, so I'll see you again then in the next video.